Welcome to this video on the structure of DNA and RNA. So DNA and RNA are both nucleic acids. They are monomers uh, that can react together to form polymers. In a nucleic acid, the name of a monomer is a nucleotide, and you can see the general structure of a nucleotide just here. So that is a phosphate group that's covalently bonded to a pentose sugar, so that is a carbohydrate uh, containing five carbon atoms, and in turn that is covalently bonded to a nitrogen-containing base. Now in DNA and RNA, there are different pentoses and also different bases present, but more information on that later but you need to be able to draw this general structure of a nucleotide. And you need to be able to draw it exactly as shown on screen here. And the examiners are very pernickety about how you draw it, down to the level of detail of this bond needs to be drawn from this point on the pentagon to the bottom left-hand corner of the base. So get practicing. Okay, so as I said, these can react together to form polymers. So where this occurs, the same as in uh, the formation of proteins and in lipids and carbohydrates, uh, we need condensation reactions to form covalent bonds. So the condensation reaction in this case occurs on a hydroxyl group attached to carbon-3 on the pentose sugar and a hydroxyl group that forms part of this phosphate group. You can see I've highlighted the hydrogen atom on this um, hydroxyl group and the full hydroxyl group here. So it's a condensation reaction. So this H2O is lost, water is lost for condensation reaction and left behind in its place where this oxygen remains behind. That oxygen now bonds both to carbon-3 and also to the phosphorus within the phosphate group. So now we have formed a phosphodiester bond. Now here we only have a dinucleotide because we've got two nucleotides joined together, but if these reactions continue in either direction and we add on more nucleotides, then we form a polynucleotide, so either DNA or RNA. Okay, so to reiterate, we have a condensation reaction producing a phosphodiester bond. Right, let's look in a little bit more detail at the structure of DNA. So you can see here then, I have a polynucleotide of DNA now, so I've got DNA nucleotides bonded together. Now, the nucleotide of DNA, uh, you need to be specific uh, when referring to the different parts of the nucleotide. So while the phosphate group remains consistent between both DNA and RNA, the pentose sugar in DNA is deoxyribose, you don't need to know what that means, you just need to know it is deoxyribose. And you need to know that the bases that can be used in a DNA nucleotide are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can abbreviate these to A, T, C, and G, but uh, you could be asked for their full names, and so you do need to name them adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So here I have one polynucleotide of DNA, and you can see that actually in a DNA molecule, we need a second polynucleotide running adjacent to it. Now, what you should notice, though, is that this polynucleotide of DNA is running in the opposite direction to this strand. So we say that we have anti-parallel DNA strands, where this strand is running in this direction, the strand that it is bonded to runs in the opposite direction. That is quite important uh, for a later video on DNA replication. What you should also, also notice is that how the strands are bonded together. You can see that we have uh, a C, a base facing a G base. Now we say that these bases are complementary to one another. Similar to the way enzymes work, where a substrate is complementary to the active site, the shape of the cytosine is complementary to the shape of the guanine. And you can see that wherever there is a C, there is a G alongside it and vice versa. And equally, wherever there is an A, there is a T alongside it and vice versa. So C and G, G and C, A and T, T and A. It is impossible for a C to line up alongside an A or a T or a G to line up alongside an A or a T. Now, what happens then when we have these complementary bases near each other is we have complementary base pairing and uh, hydrogen bonds forming between them. So between a C and a G, we have three hydrogen bonds, and between an A and a T, we have two hydrogen bonds. Uh, 
So this will occur all the way along a DNA strand. Now, DNA strands can be millions and millions of uh, nucleotides in length. And so we have millions and millions of hydrogen bonds attaching them, together, uh, attaching them together. So that makes a DNA molecule relatively stable. Now, if we move on and have a look at some other ways that the DNA can be represented, you can see here that we still have uh, a DNA strand, uh, a DNA molecule, and it's made up of two strands running anti-parallel. But in this case, although we can see the bases and the complementary base pairing, the molecule has been simplified slightly in that the phosphate group and the sugar have been simplified down to just a single line. And now they're referred to as sugar phosphate backbones. Um, now, you need to be able to interpret a diagram like this as well and say, uh, you know, what is actually happening in this drawing. And you need to refer to the fact that a sugar phosphate backbone uh, is representing the phosphate groups and the deoxyribose sugars running along uh, the, the side of the molecule. The reason it's simplified like this is because actually in terms of the functioning of a DNA molecule, it's really only the bases that are important. The sugar and the phosphate, since they remain the same between all nucleotides, it's not necessary to draw them out every time in this level of detail. So they're normally just drawn as a single line and then referred to as a sugar phosphate backbone. And that's in both, uh, both of the DNA molecules in this uh, DNA strand or both of the strands in this molecule. Finally, you might have seen, or you almost certainly will have seen, DNA represented like this, where it forms a double helix. So the double part of the name refers to the fact that we have two strands of DNA making up the molecule, and the helix uh, refers to the fact that it's twisted around like this. Now, again, you don't need to know why it twists, you don't need to know how it twists, you just need to know that it does twist to form a double helix. Okay then, so the structure of RNA. Now, there are actually uh, three types of RNA. We have messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. I will get into messenger RNA and transfer RNA in a lot more detail in a later video. But for now, let me point out that messenger RNA is made entirely of nucleic acids. It is a single uh, linear strand, sometimes forms a single helix like this but does not have a second complementary strand alongside it. Transfer RNA is made up of both um, RNA and of a single amino acid attached to it. Uh, more on that later. Ribosomal RNA is a little bit unique um, in that ribosomal RNA itself is clearly a nucleic acid is uh, made of RNA, but ribosomal RNA goes on to produce a ribosome, and it does that by bonding with a protein. So you can say that a ribosome is made up of both RNA and of proteins. You could be asked about that. Right, so as well as knowing that we have three types of RNA, messenger, transfer, and ribosomal, it's important to be able to describe the differences between RNA and DNA. So firstly, um, RNA is single-stranded. So you can see here we have our single helix making up RNA, and this is most commonly shown uh, to represent messenger RNA. So it is single-stranded. RNA is also much, much shorter than DNA. Um, so for example, uh, DNA could be millions of nucleotides long, whereas uh, the longest type of RNA, which is messenger RNA, doesn't really get past tens of thousands of um, nucleotides in length. Then we need to go on to compare the structure of the nucleotides. So we said that in DNA, the pentose sugar was deoxyribose and the possible bases were adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Well, in RNA, the pentose sugar is ribose. Again, you don't need to know the, exactly what the structural differences are between deoxyribose and ribose. You just need to know that DNA is deoxyribose, RNA is ribose. And then the bases are also different. So although adenine, guanine, and cytosine are the same between DNA and RNA, there is no thymine in RNA. So there are no nucleotides of RNA that contain thymine. In their place, they contain a base known as uracil. So the possible uh, nucleotides 
in RNA are A, G, C, and U, while in DNA they are A, G, C, and T. Now, it's very, very common to be asked um, what are the differences between DNA and RNA. So you need to learn this table um, because it could earn you valuable points. Okay, so here are the key terms for this topic. Pause now if you want to make a note of those. Loads more free resources on my website, pxsbiology.com. And if you found this video useful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and share.